Okay, hi everybody. Welcome to the live for this week. Got some great questions as always. The first one's related to a breast reconstruction question. So question number one, if a patient has had a three-stage breast reconstruction with no complications, can the implant be replaced with a bigger implant with fat grafting? And can the other natural breast have an implant to create symmetry? So if you haven't gone through a breast reconstruction journey, that sounds like a whole lot of words that don't, don't make any sense. If you have, you do realize that sometimes with breast reconstruction, you might need a staged approach. Um, you might need to change one breast to make it look like the other. And so you might need totally different operations to make it look like it's, to make it as symmetric as it possibly can be. Short answer to that question is yes, uh, you can upsize the implants. The pockets do tend to be a little bit less compliant, so a little bit firmer. So worst case scenario, you might even need to use a tissue expander, but that's quite rare. Using fat grafting is something that always helps with almost every operation, particularly for breast reconstructions down the track. Question number two, uh, what happens if I wake up after surgery and regret the implant size? That happens exceptionally rarely. I've only had one patient over 10 years where I needed to swap out to a different sized implant. I would probably say to you every time, you know, if you wanna choose a surgeon that spends a long time with you doing the planning element, so that you get things right. So there's usually three things that I like to use a sizing kit. I like to show you other patients who have similar kind of results. Also like to uh, do um, some 3D imaging if we possibly can. And if all of those things point towards the right kind of size, then I think you can have a high degree of certainty. But if you don't, for whatever reason, you have to wait for about six months just to allow the breast to settle in. And usually there's a lot of changes that happen over that six month period with the swelling and things relaxing as well. So don't jump the gun, just wait for the healing process to finish. Okay, question number three, how often do patients want to go bigger or smaller after breast augmentation surgery? Really small amount, at least in my hands. I think we mentioned that in the question number two. So, so um, if you were a patient who was very reluctant or nervous about having a, um, an implant that may be too big for you and you go too small, then yeah, I mean, there is this thing called boob greed and then some people do feel like they wish they'd put in a bit more. Hopefully with my process that um, I do, if I do feel like you are erring on the small side, I'd like to give you possibly a little nudge so that you are long-term happy. Okay, question number four. How long is the recovery following a breast reduction? So it's a about a two to three hour operation depending upon the breast. Almost always a day surgical procedure, but if you have health insurance and you'd like to stay overnight, you usually can. Um, the dressings come off at around about um, two, two weeks, sorry, and then you get to your final result, at least most of it at about six to eight weeks. Um, question number five, how are dog ears corrected after an abdominoplasty? Um, hopefully you don't have a dog ear after an abdominoplasty. What is a dog ear? A dog ear is a little bit of a puckering of the skin that the surgeon has inadvertently um, um, caused as a result of trying to keep your scar nice and short. So, you know, we don't want scars to be going all the way around your body. So um, if, if we try to keep the scar a little bit shorter, sometimes skin can pucker. A lot of doggies will correct themselves automatically over about three to four months. And if they don't, you can usually just have a minor alteration in the rooms. Question number six, can I ask for less fullness in the cleavage area? Yes, uh, and I like the look of a more fullness in the lower breast. So that's that's pretty, pretty good, not really a big issue. If you like that kind of look, we have two things we can do. We can either choose a smaller implant, choose something in the mini range or a demi range. And um, if you really want something that's very low heavy, sometimes I can also use a mentor implant in the anatomical range, which is deliberately designed to have a lot of fullness in the lower part of the breast. Okay, last question, question number seven. Um, can I breastfeed in the future if I have had a nipple reduction? Um, breastfeeding is, is ideal after you have kids, of course, but it is a high stakes thing where some people, even if they haven't had surgery of the breast, all the nipple can have issues with. So um, what I would say is that um, if I am altering the nipple, there's a potential that we might have some changes to the ability of you breastfeeding. Um, although uh, the, it's probably in the order of about five to 10% that that might change. If you want a zero chance of the ability to breastfeeding, you should avoid having any surgery on the breast because there is no procedure 
particularly of the nipple, that's going to result in having a zero change to your ability of breastfeeding, such as like a nipple ring. So that would have a change as well. So if you're really worried about it, possibly just hold off until you finish finished having kids and finished breastfeeding. Okay, so there are the questions for this week. Seven really good ones. Thank you so much. And I will see you next week. Bye-bye.